fresh water habitat. Study of physical, chemical and biological aspects of fresh water is called limnology. Fresh water habitat includes rivers, streams, lakes and ponds. Water flows continuously in rivers and streams while water is stagnant and never flows in lakes and ponds. As a result, living conditions in rivers are different from those of lakes and ponds. Salt content, water temperature, dissolved gases, availability of food and light are the factors that influence the life of the organisms in these two aquatic habitats. Salt content. The salt content in fresh water is very low, about 1.8%. Most of these salts are derived from earth's crust and a small amount is derived from the organism living in these habitats, that is after the death and decomposition of their bodies and from rain. Majority of the salts are chlorides and carbonates of sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium. When compared with the salt content of cytoplasm in the cells of living organisms, salt content of fresh water is very low. As a result, osmosis occurs between the fresh water and cytoplasm and fresh water flows into the bodies of the organisms. If this is allowed, the cells swell, burst and die. However, this does not happen as all the freshwater organisms have mechanisms to remove excess water that enters the body. Freshwater plants have the cellulose, cell wall, which prevents the bursting of plant cells. Animals have contractile vacuoles, flame cells, nephridia and kidneys to remove excess water. All freshwater animals excrete large quantities of urine with less amount of salt and nitrogenous wastes are excreted in the form of ammonia or urea. Temperature Temperature is another factor that affects life in aquatic habitat. Temperature influences the rate of biochemical reactions and physiological processes. In small ponds and lakes which are not very deep, that is shallow, the entire water gets heated up during daytime and cools down during night. In deeper lakes, only the surface water is heated up while the deeper layers remain cold. This affects the life of organisms living at various depths. For example, plankton and several of the nekton in ponds and lakes move to deeper layers of water during day and to upper layers during night time. In tropical countries, water gets heated up and evaporates from ponds and lakes during summer months. As a result, the depth of the ponds or lakes decreases and the amount of water, nutrients and gases available to the organisms are also decreased. Under such conditions, several organisms in ponds and lakes die, decompose and make the remaining water not suitable for living. In cold countries, shallow ponds and lakes freeze during winter months, thereby killing all the organisms. In deeper lakes, only the surface layers are frozen during winter, while the deeper layers are not frozen. Hence, all the organisms live in deeper layers. Aquatic animals in tropics undergo estuation or form cysts which can tolerate and survive the summer. In running waters, as seen in rivers, water temperature is reasonably uniform due to the rapid flow and mixing of 
surface and deeper layers of water. Let us now see about oxygen. Aquatic organisms require oxygen for respiration but they cannot use the oxygen present in air. They use oxygen dissolved in water. Oxygen dissolved in water comes from two sources that is from air and from photosynthesis by aquatic plants. Oxygen present in air dissolves in water. Solubility of oxygen in water is very low. Oxygen content in air is 21% while that of water is not more than 10%. Deeper layers of water get their oxygen by diffusion from surface layers. As the depth increases, the amount of oxygen dissolved in water also decreases unless there is rapid mixing of surface layers of water with deeper layers. Hence, animals living in greater depths should be able to tolerate low amounts of oxygen. Solubility of oxygen in water is more at low temperature and decreases with increasing temperature. Similarly, solubility of oxygen decreases with increasing salt concentrations. In summer, both temperature and salt content of water increases in ponds and lakes and reduces the oxygen content of water. Plants living in fresh water influence the amount of oxygen in the water as oxygen are produced during the photosynthesis. Diatoms, algae and plants with leaves submerged in water release oxygen into water during photosynthesis. Of these, diatoms are the major contributors for dissolved oxygen. The amount of oxygen released by these plants during photosynthesis depends on the light available at a given depth. This amount of light depends on the depth that is decreases with increasing depth and clarity or turbidity of water. Adequate amounts of light, right temperature and availability of nutrients are highly favorable for diatoms. They multiply in number and release oxygen during photosynthesis. Plants and animals use oxygen for respiration and release carbon dioxide into water. In addition to this, carbon dioxide present in air also dissolves in water and forms bicarbonates and carbonates. The carbonates and dissolved carbon dioxide are used by plants for photosynthesis. Food Diatoms and algae are consumed as food by several animals living in the aquatic habitat. Protozoans, larvae of several invertebrates and small animals are also consumed as food by several carnivores of aquatic habitat. As the amount of light, oxygen and temperature decreases with increasing depth, less amount of food will be available at greater depths. Hence, animals living in greater depths of lakes obtain food from the dead bodies of other organisms which sink to the bottom. Freshwater, ponds, lakes and rivers Though the factors affecting the life in freshwater are seen in ponds, lakes and rivers, there are some differences. Ponds are much smaller in size and are not very deep. Hence the amount of light, temperature, oxygen and nutrients available are more or less uniform at all the depths. However, during summer months, ponds dry up completely and during winter, water in ponds may freeze. Both result in the death of the organisms. Lakes are bigger and deeper than ponds. Light, oxygen, temperature, 
and nutrients are not uniformly distributed and decrease with increasing depths. Lakes do not dry or freeze completely. In rivers, due to the continuous flow of water, deeper and surface layers are continuously mixed, resulting in uniform distribution of temperature, oxygen and nutrients. Major problem faced by the organisms in rivers is being swept away by flowing water. Hence plants when present will have roots that penetrate deep into river bottom and leaves are narrow.